Welcome to part 12 of my Western Roman Empire campaign. After years of war and final victory, Octavius has succeeded in proving himself the rightful ruler of the Roman Empire. He also manages to bring back prosperity. Finally, he crowns his success and unites the empire under one title. Now, it remains to be seen whether he will manage to achieve further successes or whether he will fail. And so welcome to Crusader Kings 3, The Fallen Eagle. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the Roman Empire was reunited and now many tasks await the young emperor. He had made his goal to complete the reconquest of Britannia and thus complete the empire. And so I wasted no time in declaring war on Saxonia. And while the reconquest in Britain was starting, Octavius finally came of age. And his first free act was to reclaim Rome and make the eternal city the capital of the empire again. At the same time, the Praetorians had to put down a peasant uprising in Italy. In Britannia, the war was in full swing, and although I was clearly superior, I had to accept some defeats. And so, the conquest of the first English territories took longer than expected. But in the end, I was able to win the war. Finally. By the way, this war lasted 7 years. That's longer than the civil war in episode 10 of my series. Octavius by now was on the way to become a particular skilled politician, with a focus on diplomacy. I was able to station new legions in the newly reconquered territories. I created a new one in a border territory, which will now assist me in defeating or attacking. So some time passed and Octavius had his first daughter. In addition, a once very powerful nation, the Huns, had disappeared from the map. I just have to remember if someone said like, oh, you have to uh, <laughs> ally with the Huns. And yeah, I would do it, but fortunately, <laughs> they're like gone. Some martyrs there, and that's like basically the Hunnic faction, but <laughs> <laughs> They're just gone. The Huns are gone. Maybe we'll do. Uh, we'll let's play as the Huns after the Roman Empire or something else. I don't know. I spent a lot of time developing and expanding the buildings to strengthen the economy. Now and then there was a small war. Likewise, the newly reconquered territories were often replaced by legions in order to build up a larger army that might one day be able to fight on several fronts at the same time. In addition, I improved my economy even more through trade notes. However, I set myself the rule that I could not improve them above level 50, because that would be completely overpowered. In the meantime, all the improvements and developments had driven the economy up, so I could once again take care of the reconquest of Britannia. And so, another Britannic province was reconquered. And, oh yes, I somehow completely forgot to mention that Octavius had got a son. Well, yeah, now you know it. <laughs> the conquest of Britain had progressed very slowly so far. And so I decided to speed things up a bit and declared war on three tribes at the same time. The war went well. And every province I occupied became a new legionary camp. With enough legions in Britannia, I could quickly defeat future rebels. But without waiting long, I began to continue the expansion in Britannia, and my legions were a great help. The Britannian tribes could do hardly anything against my legions. And while the war in Britain was raging, Octavius had completed his first skill tree. I took care of the future development of my infrastructure while my legions occupied further parts of Britannia and slowly but surely came closer to the goal of a Roman Britain. There were now eight legions stationed in Britannia, which made the conquest much easier. And as usual, the available gold was invested in the expansion of the cities. 
After the conquest of Britain, her plan was to station legions in other border territories as well, especially on the border with Germania. But the legions also had another advantage. They had raised the military bar of the imperial laws, and I could now improve them to level 3, which gave me an incredible amount of military advantages. For example, plus 160% movement speed and an increase of the numbers and units of my available men at arms. The only downside was that I lost 85% of my levy. But that's more or less irrelevant with all the other units I now have. 15! Oh my god, this mechanic is just unbalanced as fuck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. It was now possible for me to create incredibly large armies of men at arms and add to that the incredible speed. Just for the record, this is not edited. Oh, they're so fast. Oh my god. <laughs> they're very fast. Holy shit. That's enormous movement speed. Holy. <laughs> okay. The war I fought for my allies was won in no time. With this additional strength, I concentrated on Britain again and fought against five tribes at the same time to reach my goal even faster. But while I had to accept defeats in the beginning, it was now easy to win the battles. Spread all over Britain, my legions and men and arms were victorious. And at the end of the war, Britain was almost back to the way it was before. And it didn't take much for me to reclaim all of Britain. But I was not the only one who had expanded. The Sassanid Empire had pushed all the way to India and was a danger to watch out for. 